So one last big idea from this section, and that's for the idea of specific antiderivatives. Now, to do this, we're going to revisit a concept we had from the first video. And that's for this, uh, for this problem here. If little f of x equals x squared, find an antiderivative um, big F of x. And so what we've been doing is we've just been using our formula, and we've been saying kind of just whatever we wanted to. Well, it's x cubed over 3 plus c. And we're not really thinking a lot about what this plus c means right here. But what it really means is this is any fixed number. So this is one antiderivative. This is one example. But another antiderivative could be, we could just, we could actually figure out what that c is. We could say, well, maybe it's 25. This is a function that I could take the derivative of, and I would get x squared. A third example would be that I could do x cubed over 3 plus 728, right? If I take the derivative of this function, I'll get x squared. And so the answer to the question, how many antiderivatives of f of x are there? Well, there's lots, all right? There's actually infinity, if you like that symbol there. Um, but what we're going to start looking at sometimes is they'll say, well, I don't want just the antiderivative of x, x squared. I want the antiderivative, not this one. I don't want this one. I don't want this one. I want the antiderivative where f of 1 is equal to 0. Now, so how are we going to deal with that? Well, the first thing you'll have to figure out is that big F of X is equal to X cubed over 3 plus C. And the big idea is when we get a fact like this, it's going to lock down our C. We have to figure out what C is. So if I plug in F of, F of 1, I should get 0 out, right? So if I plug in um, 1 into the x value, so I'm going to write 1 cubed over 3 plus c, I should get 0 out. So this whole thing should be equal to 0, right? So I'm putting in that 1 for my x's, and I'll put in this 0 for my, for, um, for my output, right? So putting 1 in for my input gives me 0 as an output, and that helps me figure out what c is, right? So I'm going to move this one third over there, and I'll get negative one third is equal to c. So the answer is um, there actually is a specific antiderivative where big F of one is equal to zero, and that is x cubed over three minus one third is the antiderivative of x squared. It's the function where you take the derivative and you get x squared, and if you plug in one, you'll get zero out. Now, how many antiderivatives are there um, of little f of x, this thing, where big F of 1 equals 0? And that is a big fat 1. There's only one value there. So let's look at what some of these, uh, some of these other problems could look like, where we have some maybe trickier antiderivatives. Right? So the big goals are going to be always just find the antiderivative and find c. All right? So 1 is find big F of x. And the way we're going to do that is we have our little f of x, and so we take the integral. So take the integral of cubed root of x dx, and this we will simplify as the integral of x to the one-third dx. And by our formula, this is we increase the power by one, x to the four-thirds, and that's all divided by four-thirds. Now to simplify this, we multiply the top and the bottom of my fraction by the reciprocal on the bottom. And so I know that my final answer is 3 quarters x to the 4 thirds plus c. Now, step two is find c. Right? So we know that if I plug in 0 into my formula, what do I get out? I get 2. So I'm going to write 3 quarters, um, 3 quarters times 0 to the 4 thirds plus c. Is going to be equal to 2. And so I'll have from this one, this one's really easy, 2 equals c, right? So my final antiderivative, it's just a single antiderivative here. Just answered this problem. There's one antiderivative, and that one is 3 quarters x to the 4 thirds plus 2. All right, so you find your f of x, you find your c, and then that is your single 
example of a function where if you take the derivative of this function, you'll get this out. I encourage you to do that if you don't believe me. Take the derivative. All right. Here is a final example for us to cover. All right. So our little f of x is equal to this. And we want to find a, our antiderivative where if we plug in 1 into x, we get 0. So first, we find big F of x. And so we'll take the integral of negative 2 over x cubed plus negative 4 over x to the fifth dx. This looks really bad, but uh, by the properties we learned earlier, we can split this up into two integrals. So I have the integral of negative 2 over x cubed plus dx plus the integral of negative 4 over x to the fifth dx. And now I'm going to pull this negative 2 and the negative 4 out of the integral because they're constants, right? We can write this like uh, negative 2 times 1, uh, negative 4 times 1. And I'm also going to um, kind of put those on top by making the exponents negative. So in, in total, it'll be rewritten like this. And then x to the negative fifth dx. And now it's just a simple application of our formula, right? We like the formula, now we get to use it. So we'll have negative 2 x to the negative 3 plus 1 is x to the negative 2 divided by negative 2. And we're going to add that to negative 4, x to the negative 4 divided by negative 4, because I'm doing negative 5 plus 1, right? So maybe I should even write that out for these, negative 3 plus 1. And if I go through and simplify this, I'll see that I'll have negative 2, x to the negative 2 over negative 2 plus negative 4, x to the negative 4 over negative 4, and I'll just get x to the negative 2 plus x to the negative 4, and I should have been having plus c's all through here. So that's my big f of x before I've kind of narrowed down my c. So now we have to find c, right? And the way we're going to do that is we'll plug in 1, so we'll have 1 to the negative 2 plus 1 to the negative 4 plus c, and we know the output of this is going to be 0. Now you could plug these two in your calculator, but you shouldn't need to. 1 squared is just 1, 1 to the 4th is just 1, and 1 divided by those things is just 1. Lots of 1's, 1's everywhere. So we'll have 0 equals 1 plus 1 plus c, and so we'll get, move these 1's over there, we'll get negative 2 equals c. And so our final antiderivative then is going to be the single function, where if I take the derivative of this function, I'll get the little f I started with, and if I plug in x equals 1 in this function, I'll get 0 as an output. And so again, there is one antiderivative where that is the case.